Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel SAP MM Rajiv. And today's topic is common interview questions for outline agreements. And under this outline agreement, there are two purchasing document exist. Number one is contracts and number two is scheduling agreement. In our previous lecture, we have understood and explored about contracts. And in this lecture, in this session, we will going to learn and explore about scheduling, scheduling agreements. So let us quickly jump on to our what document. So what is exactly a scheduling agreement? It is a long-term outline agreement similar to contract as contract is also a long-term agreement, right? Which is, uh, you know, created on, on the basis of, you know, quantity or on the basis of value. Similar to contract, a scheduling agreement is always created on the basis of the quantity which we have to purchase. And this is a kind of, you know, outline agreement which is set up between the supplier and the ordering party over a predefined material, which is, you know, already defined in these scheduling agreement, or maybe you can create the scheduling agreement for services as well. And these items that is, for example, material or services, these are procured on predetermined dates. What do we know? So what we can understand with this word predetermined date, that means when we are creating a scheduling agreement, after creation of the scheduling agreement, we have to maintain the delivery schedule as, as well. And these delivery schedule contains the details of the dates or maybe the different weeks on which we expect the delivery of the item or services. And usually uh, what types of industries are using? So the industries which are using uh, on a routine basis, these types of scheduling agreements are mainly automobile industries, which needs the automobile parts on a daily basis you know in each and every shift they want the item to be delivered at the start of the shift right because they don't have much space in their inventory to keep these uh, you know uh, bulk quantity of the materials on a on a weekly basis or a monthly basis so what they are doing they are giving a schedule of let's say one month or two months to the supplier and on daily basis the supplier is giving them all the items which are needed by the company to manufacture uh, automobile product. Let's say we can take the example of, you know, a bike and a bike is, you know, manufactured with the, with the, with the petrol tank, with the speedometers, headlight, tail, tail lamps, indicators, brake, clutch wires, engine, uh, two tires, right? And uh, seat cover, seat itself, shock absorbers, front and front and uh, back and uh, name plates, number plates, different types of screws, different types of fasteners are needed, chain, etc. So they, these uh, type of automotive industry, they cannot keep a lot of these type of items in their inventory. It will be very hard for them to maintain the inventory. So what they do, they are creating a scheduling agreement and sharing this scheduling agreement with the supplier on a monthly basis. And on for each shift, Let's say there is a shift A, which starts in the morning at 6, 6 a.m. And it's continuous till 2 p.m. So every morning at the start of the shift, the vendor will going to give us uh, the you know different types of parts of the motorbike. Similarly, at the start of the second shift, that is at 2 p.m., the vendor will again going to come and deliver the material for the second shift. Similarly, for the night shift, that is from 10 p.m. to morning 6 a.m. And... Let us come on to the, similarly, these scheduling agreements are also being utilized by pharmaceutical industries as well, wherein different types of, you know, tablets and syrups are manufactured. And let us come on to the process flow part. This is a little bit, you know, very different from the contracts. In case of contracts, if you remember, my dear friends, after contracts, there is a release order was maintained. But in case of a scheduling agreement, there is no need to create a release order with reference to a scheduling ag agreement because a scheduling agreement itself acts as a purchase order. It itself act, acts as an, as an order. So after creation of the scheduling agreement, we have to maintain the scheduling, scheduling lines in the scheduling agreement with the transaction ME38. That is, we will going to maintain the dates on the daily basis or weekly basis on which the item is you know required. And then good receipt is done on a daily basis because the material is delivered on a daily basis, right? So the, the good receipt is done with reference to the scheduling agreement and then payment is done with reference to the scheduling agreement. Let me just correct this. Payment is done with, with reference to the 
ये स्कड्यूलिंग एग्रीमेंट है ओके लेट एस कम टू द डिफरेंट टेबल्स सो इफ यू कैन सी this is the table ekko it is the similar table what we have you know learned and explored for contracts purchase orders till now so ekko is the header level table which is, uh, stores all the header level information ekpo is the item level table which stores the item level information so let us quickly jump on to the scheduling agreement we have right now if you can see this is the scheduling agreement this is displayed with the transaction me33l right now we are logged in s s4 hana system this is s4 hana system and this is the transition to display the scheduling agreement and if i select this line and hit on release that is purchase order history system will going to tell you that what is the good receipt uh, posted for this scheduling agreement okay and let us quickly jump on to display in the tables for you so i'm going to se16 and this is the table for header level ekko ekko and uh, let me quickly copy the scheduling agreement as well and it will display all the information at the header level this is the information you will going to see like who is the vendor when is the validity date start date when it is going to come to an end this is the document type lp this is the company code purchasing group purchase organization payment terms etc we're going to input our scheduling agreement over here and execute it and you will be able to see that these are the header level information such as you know company code the document type of scheduling agreement that is lp this is the date this this is the user who had created the vendor details as i just shown you at the header level the vendor details validity start and end date item level interval payment terms if you can see can you see triple zero one this is the payment terms which is right now appearing at the header data where i'm moving my cursor this is the header data of the outline agreement okay and we are looking at the table ekko which stores the header level information of scheduling agreement and this is the purchase organization this is the purchasing group the currency and the document date validity date validity start and validity end so validity end is 12th of august 2023 you can see the validity end is 12th of august 2023 and this is the creation date that is on 12th of february 2023 this scheduling agreement was created similarly we can check the table for ekpo ekpo which stores the item level information so let us check the same scheduling agreement executed and you will see the material relevant details like material code description plan store location this information is available in the item overview of this uh, scheduling agreement so if you can see the material code the description similarly the plant information the store location information the material group and the net price we will be able to see everything over in this table that is ekpo the which stores the item level information in the ekpo okay this is the price you can see net price that is 34 rupees per kg and here we see 34 us us dollars per kg okay now coming on to the question uh, this is the document okay yeah doc the document type i just uh, let me just quickly show you this is the document type lp which is used to create the scheduling agreement question number third is done what are the factors controlled by document type in you know con in configuration so let us quickly jump on to the configuration part here we are in spro menu and uh, if you can see let me just come back and show you from the beginning this is spro mg materials management purchasing and scheduling agreement and hit on doc define document types and here we will see we will going to check the scheduling agreement document type as lp lp so this is lp this is lp and let me just narrow this column if you can see this is item level interval 10 and this is the internal number range that is 55 and 
our scheduling agreement is generated with an internal number range that is the automatic number range which is assigned when during creation of the scheduling agreement so it is starting with 55 it is ending with 41 and this is the external number range and this is the field selection which controls all the details uh, all the day uh, which controls all the fields uh, the, what you have to maintain as you know display mandatory or optional okay let us quickly come uh, jump on to the allowed item categories so these are different types of item categories standard consignment subcontracting third party and text now let us come back to uh, lpl the field selection define <coughs> sorry define screen layout at document level this is lpl select this and here you will be able to see which are the fields which are set at mandatory level which are the fields set at optional and which are the field set at display level that is you know suppressed or hidden currency in the display fields we won't be able to do any kind of you know editing let's move on forward reference quotation number supplying vendor vendor address here you can see language item interval start of the validity period validity end period these all are mandatory entries which are maintained at header level similarly target quantity unit of measure the price and price unit these are all mandatory and rest of the units like price price, price printout indicator order price unit weight condition group these are all maintained as optional entries so this is for the you know how to make these fields as mandatory optional and then display and let us quickly jump on to our word document yes so what is the document category for uh, uh, scheduling agreements so my dear friends the document category for scheduling agreement is l just a moment uh, let me just give the table as e k k o and you will be able to see the document category can you see this here and i'm just hitting on the radio button this is the document category l and let me select this and we will going to check how many scheduling agreements are there in particular this server that is the s4 hana server let us hit on number of entries and you can see 52 scheduling agreements are available in this particular system so all the you know these different uh, documents are with the internal number in that is 55 and these are the dates on which you can see on on these date, dates these scheduling agreements are created in the, in the system okay now so this was for the uh, document category let us move on to the what are the t codes for contracts i have to just change this because earlier document was for contracts c h e d u scheduling agreement and answer is for creating it is me31l for change it is me32l and for display it is me33l and for approval it is me35l and for maintain schedule lines it is me38 right And if you if you can see in this particular scheduling agreement, let me just select this, go to the scheduling lines. There you can see there are some dates mentioned. Uh, just a moment. Let me just come out of it. Select the line, go to scheduling, delivery schedules. Can you see the dates are mentioned at 2nd of March, 3rd of March? And this particular scheduling agreement is maintained for 15,000 kg. So what we can do, just select this line and go to delivery schedule. And here you can see that the GR quantity column is empty. That means no GR is done for the for 2nd of March. What we will do, we're going to post the GR with reference to this scheduling agreement in SCP system. Okay. Uh, this is the document. Let me just come out of it. I'm just hitting on Migo. And this is the good receipt. Enter the scheduling agreement number, enter, and you will be able to see that 500 pieces we have to do the GR, which is as per the scheduling lines, which is maintained in the scheduling agreement. 
these are the schedule lines can you see the header the banner display scheduling agreement delivery schedules for item 10 so on 2nd of march we we can do the good receipt of 500 quantity and the moment we do 500 quantity gr system will going to update the 500 quantity in this particular column right now it is appearing as empty okay so let us quickly check uh, yes we have to enter this uh, as test test hit on check everything is fine and let us post this good receipt for a scheduling agreement Oh, just a moment. Uh, check the document. Oh, we are facing some some finance related issues, so we can just you know ignore this particular process at the moment, my dear friends. And let me just quickly show you that how does the system shows you the GR process? Just a moment. Let me just select this and hit on the purchase order history. Here you can see the scheduling agreement is updated with the good receipt document so in the interest of time actually this will going to take you know more time to resolve this issue so that's why i'm not proceeding proceeding ahead to resolve this issue it will going to take more time let us quickly jump on to the word document we are done with this question question number six that is what are, what are the t codes for the scheduling agreements and Last question is that what is the difference between a scheduling agreement and a contract in SAP MM? So the major difference, the main difference is that, you know, the value volume of the document generated would be higher in contract because every time we have to create a release order with reference to the contract, which is really time consuming. But in case of a scheduling agreement, there is no need to create a release order. It is itself an acts as, as an order, right? So, so friends, uh, this was all about uh, the scheduling agreement for uh, the co the common interview questions for SAP MM uh, scheduling agreement. And uh, thank you very very much for your time and attention. And uh, our next session will be for a new topic, and we're going to you know let you soon about it. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Yep. Bye bye.